Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon if you're not here on the West Coast. Uh, my name is Brian Breen. I'm the Director of Corporate Education here at UC Irvine Extension. And I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on developing a social media approach for your business. And this is a webinar that's part of our corporate training webinar series. We hope that within this hour, you'll be able to take away some key tips and uh, tricks to help you strategize on how to develop a social media uh, strategy for your company or for your department or for yourself. So before we get started, just want to go over some logistics. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and available for you within 24 hours. So during the webinar, you don't have to take notes. Um, the slides and the actual conversation audio will be sent to you via an email within the next 24 hours. Uh, during the presentation, please feel free to ask questions in the chat box, and that is on the right-hand side of the WebEx session underneath the participant panel. Um, you can put them in the chat box at any time, and if it's uh, applicable to the conversation we're having during the presentation, we will address them during the presentation, and we've also allowed some time at the end to address questions and answers. There's also an a um, an opportunity to submit questions in the Q&A, which is below the chat box as well. Um, you can send them to me privately as the host, that's me, Brian Breen, or you can send them to all participants so everyone can see your question as well. So as I mentioned, uh, this will be an hour-long webinar. Um, today what we'll cover, first we'll give you some contact information about um, who's on the panel today, I'll give you a little bit of overview of UC Irvine Extension. Um, let our panelist, Myrna Baird, uh, introduce herself and give you a little background. And then we'll get to the meat of the webinar, um, how to develop a social media approach for your business. Um, after we conclude with that, that part of the webinar, we will jump in to discuss uh, a new series of courses we're offering within the corporate education uh, department, some mini courses and then also give you a quick overview of what uh, UC Irvine Extension's corporate training department does and what our capabilities are. And then last but not least, we'll have an open forum so you can uh, give us some questions and we can have time to answer those questions. As I mentioned, I'm Brian Breen, the Director of Corporate Education here at UC Irvine Extension. And what we do here and my department is focused on developing and delivering customized programs on-site to companies throughout the world. Um, that's on-site, face-to-face, uh, online, and also hybrid or blended learning. I also have with me Natalie Blair, our corporate communications manager, who's instrumental in putting these webinars out and also working with our subject matter experts to provide you with something of value. Uh, there's our address, our fax number, and for most of the information you'd want to know about our programs and our capabilities, the website link there, extension.uci.edu uh, slash corporate. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our panelist, Myrna Baird, who will um, uh, jump in right now and uh, start talking about her background and then jump into the, the presentation. Myrna, are you there? Myrna, if you haven't done so yet, you'll need to call in. And there's a number there at the bottom. So just bear with us for a second. We're trying to get Myrna on the audio. When we're waiting for Myrna to get the audio, I'll jump ahead to talk about corporate training and uh, what our capabilities are and really what we do here at UC Irvine Extension. So we've been offering customized training companies on site for over 17 years now, uh, many different sized companies, large, small, um, to their employees. Uh, it can be anything from a brown bag lunch to a full certificate program. Uh, we customize the program to suit the uh, sponsor champion specific uh, training 
needs and objectives. That includes incorporating the company's internal processes, methodologies, or terms that uh, are applicable to what the company is trying to accomplish. Uh, we offer UC-approved curriculum and it will always provide employees with university course credit if that's what they choose. And uh, most of the companies we work with uh, tap into their own tuition reimbursement to pay for the courses, if that's something your company um, has as a resource. We uh, offer flexible, customized, customizable solutions to meet your specific needs. And like I said before, no matter where you're located, we provide uh, training on-site, online, or hybrid. Um, we've seen a, a big uh, move from a lot of companies in accepting and uh, championing uh, online or hybrid learning. So we've seen that as something new recently. If you are a decision maker within your organization and think that you have a group of 12 or 15 students to bring up one of our certificate programs, including the social media marketing program on site to your company, uh, please contact me and we can uh, discuss what your specific needs are. Okay, now it looks like we have Myrna on the line. Myrna, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear okay. me now? Yeah, okay, we can. Now. Good. Yeah, I was oh, hearing you oh. fine. I'm not sure why you couldn't hear me. Yeah, I, it's okay. I will hey, jump back to your you. slide and we'll begin the presentation. So if you can start with giving a little bit of background on yourself. Sure. Hello, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for being on the webinar with us. Um, as Brian said, I'm Myrna Bard, and I've been teaching at UCI, I believe, now going on four years, and it's been an exciting four years. been teaching social media strategy and social media um, and PR courses, and it's been fun. Um, and I have traveled the world speaking about digital marketing and social media for about seven or eight years now. Um, I do a lot of corporate training and um, just a well-known um, thought leader um, online. You'll see me all over the place online talking to people and, and posting a lot of information on social media. Um, I started my career in the advertising agency world and worked with top advertising agencies, worked with many brands um, since 1996, um, such as Taco Bell, Washington Mutual, Hilton, um, Hogue Hospital, Kawasaki, um, Avery, and Ed Hardy, and many more. Um, and then currently, I'm a consultant. I inspire organizations and entrepreneurs around the globe to leverage the internet, to leverage the social web so they can attract more powerful opportunities to their business through social media and through the digital world that we're now in. Um, and you can reach me. You can visit my website at mirnabar.com. Um, I'm constantly on LinkedIn connecting with people and talking to people, and um, you see me tweeting often. Um, and I actually also use Twitter for my courses, too. I have my students tweet, so you can reach me through there. Um, so today we're going to be talking, as Brian mentioned, developing a social media approach for your business. Um, and what we'll be discussing today, our main objective is to introduce you to developing a social media approach um, to the mini course we're holding in September. And so I'm just going to go through a very quick overview of the social web um, and why social media has become so important and relevant for businesses these days and why a lot of businesses have to start thinking about social media and their, and when they're planning for their business processes. We'll be talking about the different uses of social media, as well as some common mistakes that we're seeing um, often online and what companies are, are making, the mistakes that companies are making. And we're also going to jump into the purpose of a strategy and why it's so essential to create that written strategy before you jump on to uh, the social media bandwagon. And then we'll go over a brief overview with the mini courses and description and topics, and I'll turn it back in, um, to Brian to cover more information about that. Um, 
social media, there are media for social interaction. Action. So usually highly accessible and scalable communication techniques. And the term refers to the use of web-based and mobile technologies to turn communication into interactive dialogue. And social media refers to the activities, the practices, the behaviors among communities of people who have gathered online to share information and knowledge and opinions. And they use these tools, as you see on the screen, um, to, to gather, you know, to, to share what they want to share online. And oftentimes, when we hear social, the term social media, um, we automatically think Facebook because it's a popular site, everyone's talking about it, you know, the buzz is always about Facebook. There's still always something going on with Facebook. They have over a billion users. Um, and But as you see in this diagram, in this graph, that social media is more than just Facebook. The entire web has now become social. Um, so whether it's, you know, mobile technology or Google search, um, photo sharing, um, audio, video, live casting, RSS feeds, um, crowdsourcing or blogging, it has all become social. So any site you go on right now, if, they, if they're up to speed on what's going on online, you'll see that their sites are very interactive. We no longer have these um, static websites that are just filled with information. They're interactive. They have social tools on there. They've integrated social media on there um, somehow, whether they have forums or chats or, you know, some form uh, of community building or sharing tools on there. Um, the entire web has become social, and especially with a lot of companies that are building their own platforms now and building their own social media tools. So we must educate ourselves and become familiar with all the categories of social media and how they can be integrated together, as well as the entire marketing mix in order to leverage and maximize your efforts online. And Social media as a whole consists of all these categories. There's 15 categories, and you can see that social networking, which is the most often talked about, like Facebook and Twitter and, and LinkedIn and MySpace and all these social networking sites, are only a small portion of what social media is. Um, so we can't just focus on social networking. Um, of course, you know, there's, like I mentioned, there's microblogging and Twitter. Um, it's a social network, but it's also a microblogging tool. So there's a lot of cross between a lot of these tools. And, um, you know, Facebook, for example, is a social network, but it's also the largest photo sharing site out there, especially now that they also bought Instagram, which made them even bigger. Um, and so you don't want to ever assume that Facebook, Twitter, Google+, um, YouTube will always dominate social media forever. Um, because back in 1999, Yahoo had the lion's share of the market for search, and Google wasn't anywhere to be found yet. And today, Google has nearly all the market share. So now um, Yahoo, um, you know, merged with Bing with their search function, and so now Google is the dominant player, and then we have Bing, which brings in about 20 to 30 percent of the traffic. And so we never should assume that one player is going to stay in the market all the time. And another good example of that is we also saw, saw the rise and fall of MySpace. Um, MySpace, MySpace is no longer talked about. Even though it's still in existence, no one goes on there anymore. Um, they've really dropped their share. They've dropped their users. Um, and so and another example, very recently, it's Facebook with, with, teen, with the teen market. Now they're talking about how, you know, the teen market is disappearing off of Facebook because now they're into mobile apps and tools and a lot of other things are catching their attention, like video apps. Um, so. So never assume, again, that it's going to be a Facebook all the time. So when you're looking at the social web, and not to scare anybody, it, it does look as crowded as this image right now. It's, it's website after website. It's growing. New tools are coming up every day. New apps are coming up every day. We have social um, niche networks. Um, that are also um, on the rise right now. So it's not only about the big players that are always talked about, but it's also the small niche networks where your target audience is probably hanging out. So whether you're targeting attorneys, whether you're targeting real estate agents, whether you're targeting seniors, they, have, they all have their own social niche networks um, currently. Um, so when we talk about why social media, oops, I'm going backwards. Um, First, uh, 
you know, for one, consumers are getting smarter about who they do business with. And there's a shift in that consumer habit. There's a shift in technology, of course, and there's a shift in, in generations. And consumers are now doing as much research as they can before they make a buying decision. And they are doing most of this research online. They're going through their mobile phones or their um, desktops or even their, you know, their iPads or tablets. And they're getting smarter um, about, you know, what they want to buy and who they want to buy from. So they're using search engines like Google. They're reading blogs and forums to find out more information about products and services. And they're going to social networking sites to ask friends and peers and colleagues about their experience with products and services. And that's one thing that I do. I jump on Twitter and ask, you know, who, who has used this product? Or do you prefer this, this smartphone? Um, over this smartphone. And when I throw out questions like that, I get, you know, at least several answers from different followers um, giving me their opinions and their feedback. And this is what we're seeing that's happening online. Um, recently in a Pooh Internet um, project sample, 79% of American adults that they use the Internet, nearly half of adults, 47% um, or 59% of internet users say they use at least one social network. Um, and this is close to double um, the 26% of adults who used um, social networks in 2008. So you can see those numbers are growing. And now consumers, um, they no longer want to be sold to. They um, they want you to know they their name. They want you to be they want you to listen to them rather than ignore them. They want to be spoken to more willingly than spoken at. When you know in traditional marketing and advertising, they're used to having that messaging, and they're used to be spoken at. Now that's shifted. Um, they want their wisdom to be considered instead of their intelligence consultants through advertising. They want you to tap into their wisdom. They want you to ask them questions about your products and services and engage with them in conversation and ask them questions. So this is where we see that shift happening right now. Um, another reason why social media is the newspaper magazine circulation, of course, has been dropping over years. They're not, traditional media is not dead like you see in this image, but it's dropped. And there has been a shift to the online world, uh, TV viewership. Now, if, you know, TV shows are not integrating some form of social media in there, you know, they're not being, um, you know, as watched, they're not getting the, the viewership um, as well. And then we see yellow pages. Um, in today's generation, they probably don't even know what yellow pages are. You know, they didn't grow up with the yellow pages. So we're seeing that shift there as well. Um, well, consumers also have to, uh, ways to block messages now. We have TiVo, um, you know, to block out TV ads. We have our spam blockers for email marketing as well. And then we have caller IDs for telemarketers, so we can block out telemarketers if we want don't want to speak to them. So consumers really want to be treated as humans um, by building relationships and interacting with brands. Um, and, and I know I'm one of them. I know, you know, this, this shift has been happening, and I see that with myself as well. And just to share with you some stats, um, in just some recent stats, two-thirds of online adults, 66% use social media platforms. 27% of total U.S. Internet time is spent on social networking sites. And 15% of total U.S. mobile Internet time is spent on social, uh, social networking sites. 25% of consumers who com uh, complain about products on Facebook or Twitter expect a response within one hour. So if, if your company's not on there and people are talking about it and they're trying to ask you questions and they're trying to reach out to you, you're going to, you're going to lose some loyalty there because they're waiting for your response. They're waiting to talk to you. Um, approximately 46% of online users count on social media when making a purchase decision, which is a pretty significant number. Um, and another reason, uh, which is a huge reason why social media is the new generation. Um, and it's the Gen Y and Gen Z, the people born after 1980 and 2001. They don't know anything but the computer and the mobile phone. They are truly the first generation born with the computer, learning at a very young age, so they are extremely tech savvy, and they possess an innate comfort with all things digital. Um, they are used to accessible information and they share it easily. 
Um, they have an array of tech tools and means for communicating with one another, with organizing social events, with working together. They're plugged in 24-7. They probably take the, their phones to bed. Now I'm seeing, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing waterproof phones. So I'm thinking, you know, people are going to start taking them swimming and in the shower, and they just can't let go. Um, and I see this every day. And if you watch people on a daily basis in public and how they're interacting with their mobile and their phone, this is what we're going towards. And um, they get most of the information and so socialization from the internet. They're socializing with friends, um, you know, online and through their mobile phones. Um, they won't do anything without their smartphone. They envision the world as a 24-7 place, and they want fast and immediate processing. They're not patient, um, and they're very savvy. They're savvy consumers, and they know what they want. They know what products they want to go, you know, purchase. And they're very assertive with strong views. So this target audience may not be your target audience now. Um, but if you're planning to stay in business five, ten years from now and, um, you know, and now is the time to do it and jump on digital and jump on the social world without letting any barriers get in the way before it becomes harder to connect with this audience later. It's better to jump on now and learn about this audience and learn about their behaviors and what they're doing. So when the time comes and they are, you know, at the age where they are your target audience, you know exactly how to reach out to them. Okay, um, just some common uses of social media. Um, a lot of us think that social media is just about marketing because of what's going on online. People, you know, you hear everyone saying social media marketing. It's a well-used term. And we go beyond um, social media marketing in our UCI courses and, in, and specifically in this course as well because social media is beyond marketing. Um, it's, it has marketing, of course. It's about sales and promotion and lead generation and market research and communicating with the audience. But social media also plays a big role in public relations now. It's about branding. It's about reputation management. It's about crisis management and influencer relationships relationships. Um, it's also about human resources and um, a lot of, we're seeing a lot of human resource departments using it for recruiting, using it for internal communication with their employees and employee relations. Um, we're also using human resources, using it for training. So we're seeing companies building actual training um, uh, modules through social media sites um, or starting groups on social media like Facebook, employee groups, LinkedIn, um, or they're going on virtual worlds um, and starting, you know, online training. If they're a global company, they get to have people join online um, virtually instead of having to travel to a conference site. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that. And social media plays a big factor in customer service. So it's about really communication and customer relations and loyalty and, you know, knowing how to retain those customers. And um, a lot of companies are using um, sites like Twitter for customer service because it's quick feedback, it's a quick response, and a lot of customers now expect it. So as you can see, it goes beyond marketing, and the companies that are just using social media for marketing purposes are actually not leveraging social media properly. They're missing on a lot of other things that they can be doing online, and this is pretty much what we cover in our courses. What other ways can companies leverage social media and do it properly so they're really getting you know, their value out of it? They're getting their return of investment um, out of social media. Um, just some common mistakes that are seeing where, of course, there are still hundreds of mistakes being made on social media sites, which is okay. It's still a very new industry considering, um, you know, it's been around for a while now, but it's still new to a lot of companies and a lot of brands, and, there, you know, a lot of companies are jumping without um, thinking about it. They're just saying, well, let's try it out. Let's see, you know, let's see what happens if we do start a Facebook page or a Twitter account. Um, but a lot of common mistakes are, um, you know, for one, it's, 
this, you know, not having a strategy and having that tactical um, short win approach. And this is probably one of the biggest mistakes businesses are making. Um, and the reason we have a social media strategy course at UCI, many are jumping online without a clear path or a deep understanding what social media is and how they can properly leverage the social web. It's essential to put together a comprehensive strategy with micro strategies for each business process. When it's not planned out, um, what ends up happening is efforts online tend to be very tactical and short win and reactionary. So it does not provide scalability. It might be a very, you know, you might do very well in a month, you know, for a month because it's a short win solution, but going beyond that doesn't doesn't really get you anywhere. So we'll be talking about um, strategy a little bit more in a couple minutes because it's really a very important part of taking that social media approach. Um, Another mistake we're seeing is no research and listening. There's lack of research and analysis to gain knowledge of the target audience or competitors or listening online to see what people are already talking about to find potential opportunities and threats. And this is really a big part of, you know, the, the strategy that you would put together is, you know, we highly recommend that companies jump online and without even engaging at first, without even communicating with the audience to really listen to what people are saying, to listen to what people are saying about them, about their executives, about their brand, about their products. Um, about their customer service, about competitors, and just general conversations that are happening in their industry. When when something like that is, you know, when a company does that, they really gain a lot of insight and they see where the opportunity lies and how they're going to go, be, you know, beyond and how to, they're going to move forward to communicate with their audience. So this really becomes a very essential step that a lot of companies are still um, skipping out on. There's also um, another mistake we're seeing is lack of buy-in or still being very closed-minded and being very traditional-minded, which does not work very well with social media. Um, we're still seeing those organizations using social media, but they don't have a complete buy-in from their organizational leaders or their executive team. And many are still closed-minded and skeptical about social media and if it works or it doesn't work. So they're, they're choosing not to take the time to plan to make any changes to their culture that need to be made and a new way of thinking for the digital age, which is, you know, creating that openness, being that open organization, being authentic with the audience, um, and just being very, um, you know, creating that dialogue because we're not used to that um, as companies and brands and we're just used to being, being very traditional. We're used to pushing out messages that now, you know, um, and that's, but now that's considered very close-minded with social media. Now we have to open that up and be more open-minded to, you know, having that dialogue with the audience and creating more openness. Um, Another common mistake is no or low integration. And companies are also forgetting to integrate all their business processes with social media online efforts. And we just went through the marketing example. It's not only about marketing, but it can be integrated with um, not only traditional advertising and marketing, but with public relations, with customer service, with human resources, with anything internally that's going on, on inside your company. Um, and we're still not seeing that completely with a lot of companies because they're so focused on the marketing aspect of it. Um, and another mistake is only choosing tools based on popularity. A good example of this is the diagram I just showed you um, because, you know, missing out on the true potential of the social web and really knowing um, it's actually this one. Um, really missing out on all these other opportunities and a lot of companies are just saying look Facebook is the big one we're going to go towards Facebook that's all we're going to be doing or you know this is going to be our main focus but look at all the other categories and opportunities that they're missing out on where they can engage with their with their customers and and their client base and consumers so really, it's not about going where the popularity is just because everyone is using a specific tool or because, you know, it's a shiny new object and, and, and you know, it's 
something that everyone's talking about. It's really understanding where your target audience um, is hanging out and where they want to communicate with you um, and, and really going after the tools that are going to help you with your business. They're going to help you grow your business, whether it's about growing your profits or reducing costs somewhere or, you know, maybe go, um, increasing your brand loyalty um, or brand recognition. So you really have to understand how these tools work and why they're so important instead of just focusing on, on the big ones. Um, hey, and Marianne, the last mistake, yeah. Mary, real quickly, um, just just as a talking point, um, where would or most organizations that have successfully implemented you know social media strategy and used all of the different um, marketing, public relations, human resources, customer service, where where has the strategy been spearheaded um, from? Is it take place in marketing, you know? executive level, where have you seen where the strategy has been, you know, started and then implemented and championed from? Um, well, from matter? what I'm seeing, Brian, it, a lot mm -hmm. of company, a lot of departments are actually fighting over social media because they can't agree whether it should belong in marketing or public relations. And a lot of companies do have that integrative, like marketing, public relations falls into one department. But what mm -hmm. I normally recommend for companies is not to just focus on marketing. All these, all these departments should be working together to make it happen. So if these are separate departments, and if marketing is taking the, the lead role in this, that's fine. But marketing should not only be, so it should not be operating as a silo. Marketing should be talking to public relations. They should be talking to HR. They should be talking to the legal department and customer service to really make, to le really leverage social media the way it should be leveraged. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay, and lastly, um, the metrics is another mistake, is not having the proper metrics or proper measurement in place. So without measuring, um, we're, we don't know where to go, basically, and mostly because of the lack of knowledge and, and what metrics are out there. There are a lot of great metrics out there. Social media can definitely be measured um, in a lot of ways. Um, the ROI, of course, is still very, um, um, just very confusing to a lot of companies and how to get ROI on social media, but there are tools that will help um, measure the, you know, the time being spent, the money being spent, how consumers are engaging, how they're consuming your content, um, how they're interacting with you, and um, maybe sentiment measuring. Are they saying to, uh, positive things about your brand? Are they saying negative things about your brand? Is it pretty neutral? So these things can definitely be looked at, and there's a lot of data out there. Um, and although, although social media is still hard you know, to measure considering, you can still use a lot of the data to, to really sway your social media the way you want to. Um, and you can be tracking mentions of your brand. You can be evaluating your reach. You can see what influencers are saying and, and getting influencer scores. So, but we're still seeing a lot of companies that are not doing any of these things. And, and partly, like I said, it's, it's lack of knowledge. Um, so I said social media um, needs a strategy, and I said that was the most important thing, um, you know, that needs to be done because it is a very common mistake. And the benefits of a planned social media strategy are numerous. This is not about relying on intuition. Um, while this informal knowledge is important in a decision-making process, it may not provide you with the facts you need to achieve marketing results. And a social strategy will help you um, in defining business goals and developing activities to achieve those goals. And you don't want to think, um, you know, it really gives you a direction and where you're going with social media. So you're not jumping on, you know, blindfolded. And it helps you see the big picture. Um, so your uh, plan can become scalable and you know how to grow that. Um, it keeps you focused on your goals. It enables you to set measurable objectives. Again, it goes, up, it, it goes back to measuring because um, if we're not measuring, we don't know how to correct course if we need to. Um, and it stops you from making a lot of mistakes. And we, like I said, we're still seeing a lot of those mistakes. So they become, um, you know, social media becomes a time waster. Um, if we don't have a plan, so a plan does save time, it reduces a lot of overwhelm. We're seeing a lot of companies jumping on, you know, 
10 different platforms, 15 different platforms, and they're really getting overwhelmed with what's important and, you know, what to choose, but a really a strategy will set that in place. You'll know exactly what becomes important. You'll know what to look at, and you'll set your different tactics for each, uh, for each platform that you're on. Um, when you have a written strategy, success is more sustainable and it's more long-term versus that short one that we talked about, and we don't want it to be tactical. Because, it, it, again, it, it's not scalable when it's tactical. It's tactical. Um, it can easily be transferred to others. And this is really an important one because you have, you know, we have companies and employees are always leaving or some companies use contractors or freelancers. Um, and then there might be different departments that work on the social media strategy. So when you have a written document that can be transferred to others in case someone leaves your company or in case other departments are using it, um, it can easily be given to that person or if you're trying to outsource, you know, the, the tasks, you can easily give the plan to the company you're outsourcing to versus, you know, not knowing what's going on um, and, and planning things last minute. And it allows you to target your primary customer. Again, it's really not about jumping on those pop popular social networks. It's really knowing where your target customer is and who that target customer is. Because when social media, when we say target customer, we're not only talking about your consumers, people who are buying your products and services and doing business with you, but we're also, there are people that, you know, you can partner up with in social media. There are influencers out there that you need to be connecting with. There are bloggers that you need to be talking to. So for the most part, those are going to be becoming part of your, um, your primary customers as well. So this is why having that strategy in place, you know the different segments that you're going to be targeting at a given point. Um, a social media strategy also enables you to spend budget more efficiently and effectively, so you're not wasting dollars and throwing away dollars, and that can happen very easily in social media because there are a lot of tools out there. Um, even though the social networking platforms are free to use, you still have to spend budget on, you know, creating the apps and, and creating the campaigns and maybe hiring the right people. And a social media strategy really, you know, puts that um, up front for you. It helps you remain dedicated and consistent. And that's actually another mistake we're seeing is a lot of companies are jumping um, on the bandwagon, but they're falling off. They're dropping off. You see a lot of pages that are being neglected. They're being ignored. They're being, um, it's kind of like a ghost town when you, when you go on these pages because they were started, but they don't have the proper team um, to dedicate the time to it. So a social media, again, strategy helps you define who your voice is going to be, how much time they're going to be able to, ded uh, to dedicate to it, and, and how consistent they need to be um, with, you know, putting out messaging and putting out content out there. Um, it also allows social media programs to keep growing. Again, it's all about scalability because social media is not going away. It's an ongoing conversation. As long, you know, for the life of the company, as long as you want to be online, as long as you want to be visible online, your social media needs to be, you know, ongoing. And a social media strategy will help you do that. It helps you determine what works and what doesn't work. So you can change course. A strategy needs to be fluid. So if you build, if you write a, if you write a strategy or develop a written um, document, it does not mean that everything is set in stone. You should be measuring every month and, and you know, changing course or um, changing your tactics accordingly um, and making sure you're, you know, you're doing the right things that are getting you the results. If you're not getting results, you have to make changes month to month and make sure you keep that strategy fluid so it's constantly changing and adapting to, um, to social media. Um, there was a recent study in our, uh, that R2 Integrated did, and it showed that most companies which had a strategy in place said that social media is innovative and invaluable to their business. However, some companies that did not have a strategy thought social media was pointless and a worth of the uh, and not worth the investment. So you can clearly see the, the companies and the brands that are jumping on and being very tactical. They're not planning things out. They're overwhelmed. They're not knowing what to do. They're not getting the results that they should be getting. But the ones that are taking the time to you know build the teams, plan out, you know, um, you know, have that long-term strategy in place. They're 
the ones who are getting that immediate ROI out of social media, and they're seeing the value and, and why it needs to be done. Myrna, do okay. you have some examples? Myrna, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have some examples of some companies that have um, fit in each of the categories you just mentioned? Maybe that are well, brands that we're, we're renowned. Yeah. A lot of the bigger companies like, you know, Starbucks, um, you know, Pepsi, a lot of the bigger companies who have the budget to build the great teams, the social media teams are really taking off the social media we're seeing. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that it has to be a great big brand that can be successful in social media. It just means that they're taking the time and they're de dedicating the time to it. And that's essential whether it's a small business or whether it's an entrepreneur or, or a large brand. So we're seeing that a lot with the bigger companies. The smaller companies, I think, you know, they're, the problem there is, is lack of um, resources. Um, and, and that's what we're seeing and not being able to dedicate the resources. But once they find a way to dedicate the resources, they're, they're seeing the results there as well. Okay. Okay, um, so um, as far as the mini course, so we just covered a little snippet of what we would be covering in the mini course that we're holding um, in September on campus. And this is a one-day fast-track course that provides a methodology to approach, um, plan, integrate, implement a sustainable social web strategy for achieving business objectives in any enterprise. So whether you are a business to business, a business to consumer, and not for profit, um, this course will definitely be very helpful for you. Um, the cost of this course is $295. It includes breakfast and lunch. Um, and I believe Brian will talk a little bit more about it as far as times. But it, again, it is on campus. And registration opens um, online July 26th. Um, and some of the, uh, the things we're going to be discussing in the course are just the social media basics, like we just talked about. We're going to be talking about how to get that executive buy-in, what cultural changes need to happen, that shift that needs to happen with a company in order to succeed with social media, how to set the proper goals and objectives, and how to make sure that they are measurable. Um, we are going to be talking about how it's important to assess the business before you jump onto social media and the importance of that. We're also going to be talking about SM usage like we did today, um, you know, how to use it for business-to-business -to -business setting, to business-to-consumer setting. We'll have a comparison, um, the resources you need in order to jump onto social media as well. Um, we'll be talking about how to initially conduct the research, how to start monitoring and listening online, how to determine your target audience and how to determine where your target audience is hanging out um, and where they want to um, communicate with you online. We're also be going to be talking about the importance of branding and why this is so essential with social media and why this is a skipped phase for a lot of companies, but it needs to be done. Um, we'll be talking about engagement um, and choosing the voice, the people who are going to be the voice behind your brand on social media sites. We'll be talking about tar uh, content marketing and developing a, a micro plan for your content marketing and what that entails. We'll also be discussing those categories and tools we just covered in more detail. So we'll be talking about the individual categories of social media and what they're best used for um, and how you can use them in your companies. Um, we'll also be talking about integrating social media, whether it's integrating with traditional advertising or marketing or with your PR, um, other business processes as well. Um, we'll be discussing social media policy and who needs a social media policy, why it's important for some companies, why some companies may not even need a social media policy. Um, we'll be discussing the elements of um, the elements that go into a policy. Um, we'll also be covering conversion and um, how to get, you know, it's not only about keeping those, um, the audience on social media sites, but how do we convert them? How do we convert them into customers or into opting into something? Um, and then measuring and monitoring, lastly, and, you know, the most, one of the most important factors um, in using social media as well. 
Um, so who should take this course? Um, anyone who, you know, business owners, executives, as well as professionals in marketing and public relations and human resources and customer service and others who want to understand and leverage the power of social media by taking that long-term sustainable strategic approach. And anyone who wants to, you know, even if you're an entrepreneur and you want to learn more about um, social media and the importance of it in your business, and um, this is definitely the course for you. So um, I'm going to open it up to Q&A and back to Brian and anything you want to cover, Brian, as well. Thank you, Myrna. And again, um, if you do have a question, please feel free to type it in the chat box or the Q&A section, and we have some time to address those questions. Uh, a question already arose regarding if the mini courses are only on our campus or online. And right now, all of our mini courses are just face-to-face -face on our campus here in Irvine. Um, this is the first round of these classes, so we are considering offering these same courses in an online format sometime next year as well. But if uh, you are interested in something maybe more extensive than the mini course, we do have you know an entire uh, marketing social media certificate program that um, Myrna teaches in that you can take online as well. Uh, just to go over again the information regarding Myrna's course she's going to be teaching, um, it is uh, going to cost $295 and is here at UCI at our Cal IT2 building room 3008. So um, I'm looking at some other questions right now. Sorry about that. I just got uh, knocked off the conference line, so I apologize for that. I wanted to give you some dates for the um, mini courses. And as you can see, the social media course that Myrna will be teaching is on September 6th. And uh, so registration opens July 26th for that course. But you can, uh, if you're in the area and you're interested in the class, that's on, uh, I believe it's a Friday, Friday, September 6th. Uh, as I mentioned also, um, there is a full public social media program that's entirely online, and we do have fall courses uh, available for registration on July 26th. You can go to our website to uh, access that full certificate program. Um, if you register with three or more uh, colleagues from your own company, we do give a 10% discount, and also we can bring any of these social media courses on site or offer them specifically for your employees at your company entirely online or in a hybrid format. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are starting this mini course series. Uh, they're accelerated high impact training for, targeted for managers and executives. Uh, they're one and two day extensive courses offered monthly on our UCI campus, all inclusive courses that include lunch, parking, and materials. And we're offering a wide variety of topics, including uh, social media, marketing, Six Sigma, leadership, and project management. Um, we're really trying to increase your business insight and expand uh, those who are participating's professional network. So here's a list of the upcoming mini courses. And again, this uh, 
for those of you who jumped on a little late, this uh, presentation is recorded and will be sent to you along with the slides. So um, you don't have to necessarily write down all this information right now. So I have a few other questions. Uh, Nick was asking how, where is the certificate program located? Again, it's 100% online. And uh, maybe Mirna at this time, for those who are interested in taking your online course, you can uh, talk to him about how you structure the course and the work involved and such and uh, how it's in, what type of, you know, are you using uh, Camtasia? Is it purely uh, asynchronous format? Uh, maybe if you could share them something. Sure. Share them. Sure, yeah, my online courses um, specifically are live WebEx, like we're, we're um, having today. So my students are hearing me, they're seeing my slides, and um, we interact so they're able to ask questions, and we create a lot of dialogue and, and conversation about the topics we're speaking about. Um, the strategy course is an eight-week course, and it's once a week um, in the evenings, and we do discover a lot, of, just um, cover a lot of the strategy topics, and the final project for that course is actually to put together a strategy, a social media strategy for your company. Um, I do have a lot of mini assignments. We also have case studies that we cover in the course that the main um, project is to put together that strategy. Um, I also teach uh, social media and PR, which is the same thing. It's actually Actually online live WebEx and that is a six-week course um, um, in the evenings again and in that course we do have um, more assignments but you will be putting together uh, social media and a public a social media for public relations strategy so it's a micro strategy for just public your public relations efforts and I do have quizzes um, as well a, a few small assignments in that course as well too so if you have any questions about those courses, please do let me know. Yeah, so anyone who is interested in taking those more extensive courses, uh, you can visit our website and access the, the link to the specific courses and the course descriptions, or you can just contact me and I can put you in touch with the program manager who knows a lot more about these um, courses. I have a question, Mirna, from a gentleman uh, that asks, with so much pressure in using social media and being more open and transparent, how is it affecting business decisions on what to share and what not to share? Um, you know, a lot of what we recommend for businesses is to, of course, all the conf all the confidential information that should not be shared um, should be kept you know, within the company. And of course, there should not be any pressure to share anything confidential. But when we say create openness and authenticity, it means just letting people into your company, showing them the behind the scenes, introducing them to your employees, letting them get to know your employees, because your employees are a valuable asset, and your consumers and customers want to know who is working behind that product or who is working behind the brand. Um, they want to see beyond the logo. And that's what we mean when and creating openness is really creating that dialogue um, and sharing what goes on within the company, whether you've won an award, whether you are um, maybe um, recognizing an employee, you have promotions, you have parties that happen within your company and events and showing photos of those parties and just being human um, and just showing the human side of the business versus just showing the logo and just the technical aspects of the business, I think that's when consumers and customers start to appreciate that. So companies should not be pressured to share beyond that. Um, they should just be, you know, just be themselves and share, you know, let their employees be human online and let their employees be themselves and just showcase their personalities. And I think that's when you start to see a difference. Great. And Myrna, another question. Um, one of the participants works in higher ed and the audience is very diverse, professionals between the ages of 20 and 60, some of whom are switching careers, some who need to update specific skills. Uh, this participant found that our audience has varying levels, levels of social media literacy. Some are very engaged and ask us questions directly, and some are brand new to the concept and need to be walked through it. What tips do you have for curating content that addresses such a wide audience? Um, are they teaching social media to their audience? Is that what, they're, what she's asking? Or 
I'm not sure of teaching. I think it's more of just uh, utilizing it within their organization. Okay. Um, well, I think it's essential to educate your customers on how to use social media. Never assume that they know what to do. So a lot of companies, if you jump on their website, they have sections of their websites and recommending to their customers how to engage with them online, whether it's on their blog or a specific section of their website. Just educating, having maybe mini videos or courses on your website or a platform that your customers can see so that way any level of a customer knows, okay, how do I engage with this company? You know, are they on Twitter? How do I talk to them on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? What what do they want me to do on Facebook? You always have to have, um, you know, educating your customers and having that call to action to them and, and telling them what to do um, because they're not going to know. They're not going to know that you want them to answer a question on Facebook or you want them to chat with you on Twitter unless you, you tell them and it's okay to do that. So if you feel like they're not social media savvy, then it's probably your, um, it, you need to play a role in that to get them to be social media savvy as well if, if you think that they're going to be online engaging with you. Do you find that organizations sometimes will put departments or individuals through, you know, social media training or um, – They almost level? have to, Brian. Um, uh -huh. Right now, it, it, I, I feel that every single employee in the organization should know social media, even the – although – some employees are not going to be engaging with your audience online. And the reason I say that is because they have to know um, what the consequences are if they say something online that can hurt them, that can hurt their um, the brand. Um, they have to be well trained to know what to say, what not to say, um, because we see that some um, c customers may say something negative about a brand online, and we see that employees jump to say something to that customer when they're not trained or they're not, you know, they're not the voice of the brand, but they still do it. So if a company does not train them on, you know, what to say and what not to say and how to behave online, that's when a lot of mistakes end up happening, and that's when we see a lot of confidential information and, and um, a lot of uh, brand, um, brand mistakes happening online. So I think every employee, whether they're your forefront employees or behind the scene employees, they should be trained with social media. Great. Uh, there's another question, a general question. Are there any other online courses available? Just so everybody knows, uh, most of our certificate programs are entirely online. So again, visit our website. And if you're interested in uh, similar topics, maybe just uh, general marketing courses or any of the other courses we mentioned before in the mini courses, Project Management, Six Sigma, we offer all these programs uh, online as well. I'd also like to uh, let you know that uh, we have the next webinar in the corporate webinar series is uh, an effective business communication webinar. Uh, this is on Thursday, August 29th, same time, and it will be via WebEx as well. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, register today. And uh, again, I know it's only a couple minutes away from the end of this uh, allotted time we have for the webinar. Uh, I would like to thank you for attending. Uh, Myrna, Myrna and I will stay on the line for a couple more minutes in case there's any last minute questions. But again, if you're interested in enrolling in the mini course that's coming up on September 6th, uh, please feel free to either enroll on July 26th or give me or Natalie a call. And uh, if any of you have any questions for Myrna offline or when you get back to work and think about another question um, and you want to contact her, please contact me and I can put you in touch with her as well. And she also listed her um, websites and her LinkedIn and uh, Twitter on the slide of her bio so you can contact her there as well. Again, thank you for attending, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you in the mini course, uh, another webinar, or in one of the online courses that Myrna will be teaching. Thanks. And have thank a great you, day. everyone. Bye. Thanks, Myrna. Bye. Bye. Thank you.